for daily ass credit, interstate rest area and truck stop employees, what's the most bizarre story you have? I worked at a gas station slash truck stop for over a year in high school. I have lots of stories. So, one time I'm closing up the station. I was starting to count the till before I turn on the security system and leave. I've got a wad of 20s when 4 cop cars come ripping into our lot. I run to the windows, two cops go to the back, and the other two position at the corners, where it's hard to see them through the windows. Now, I'm an idiot high schooler, so I'm trying to look out the window grasping $300 and 20s, when I realize they've got weapons drawn, and are trying to look at me. I put my hands up, cash in hand, and start yelling that I'm an employee. They let me unlock the door and come in. They were nice, but clearly frustrated that I set off the alarm. I tell them 4 to 5 times that the alarm was not set, but they insist that I'm wrong and that they had a clear security report. So I took them to the panel, verified it was off. Then my smarts kick in. Hey guys, what address was the alarm for? 303 Baker. Why? That's not our address. That's ABC Supplier Block North. They moved quickly to that business. I heard later that the safe was taken from that supply store. I worked at a way station for big rigs. There were two of us at the station working nights waiting for trucks to pull onto the scale. If anything weighing more than a pound got on the scale it would send an audible beep into the booth and light up the computers. If it wasn't a trucks then most of the time it would be the wildlife wandering out onto the scale, which we would ignore then quickly go back to watching Netflix, or whatever. One night though it was something weighing 132 lbs. We couldn't see it from the windows, but checking the cameras we noticed it was a hunched over naked man shaking like a shitting dog, and scratching the side of his face. While my co-worker radioed for the state troopers I used the intercom to tell him to get off of the scale. Instead he lurched on over and began licking the window. He did this until he was checked out by M's and taken away by law enforcement for public intoxication. It was later discovered he was using meth. Years ago when I was a kid we were traveling with my mum, her best friend and my sisters. We were pretty tired and pulled into a truck stop for some food and bathroom break. We walk in my mum, asks a guy where the bathrooms were he points us in the right direction and off we toddle. We come out, take a seat, and wait for the waitress to come take our order. She seems to be taking a while, but we figure she's probably busy and will come when she can eventually she comes over and tells my mum that everything is okay and the police are on their way. My mum pretty confused, asks her what she means. Well turns out we had walked into the middle of an armed robbery and my mum had actually asked the robber where the toilets were. Not an employee, but a frequent cross country traveler. Weirdest was pulling up to a truck stop to fill up in southeastern South Dakota during the height of the Mayfly hatch, millions of bugs all over. I started filling up and was getting ready to clean my windshield, and I happened to look over across the way and there was some dude driving a big box truck in the diesel fueling area. He was scraping them off the front of his truck, and eating them by the handfuls. Other days before cell phones were a thing. Edit to update, thank you guys so much for the upvotes. It was honestly the single most memorable thing I've ever witnessed in my countless cross country trips, since the late 90s. I just stood there, mouth agape, not believing what I was seeing. And every time I remember it, I'm sad I didn't have a cell phone to record it, because it was just so crazy. I'm sure mayflies are nutritious, and I'm not knocking cultures that eat bugs. But mayflies smell like fish fesses to me, and eating them straight off the front of your car is just extra special. Not me, but my dad managed a truck stop for a year or so, at this truck. Stop drivers could get a shower, but it's timed, since there are usually multiple people waiting to get one as well. One day a guy is showering, and his time is up, but he didn't come out. One of the employees knocked and requested he come out, so the next person could shower, but still no response. They eventually entered the shower, to find the man dead. It turned out, that he had suffered a major heart attack, while he was in there. Another one, and apparently this is somewhat common, 
a truck transporting honeybees left the stop, but the queen from one of the hives had taken residence in or around the pump while the truck was stopped. They had to get a beekeeper out to capture and move the queen and her colony before they could let anyone near the fuel pumps. Overnight shift supervisor 15 years ago. On Valentine's Day, then 18 years old, I was the only lonely MOTHERF asterisk CKING shift supervisor to be able to work second shift at McD's rest area because, again, lonely with no date. I'm half asleep working the shift, guy comes in high as a kite, actually he's higher than kites can go. He orders his food and leaves. An hour later, my cleaning guy, we'll call him Pedro, tells me there's a guy on the toilet that won't come out. We go in, keep knocking and we are thinking he's sleeping on the shitter. We can see his pants around his ankles and he's leaning down. While I go call the cops, I tell my cleaning guy to block the bathroom so no one goes into that part of it. There's two sides to the bathroom. Pedro comes out and tells me the guy is purple and dead on the shitter. He overdosed on something, not sure what. The kicker is that Pedro decided it was in his best interest to run the guy's pockets before the cops show up, which is how he found out the guy was dead. Pedro took the guy's stash and money before leaving. I found out a week later as I overheard it through the crew talking. Fun times at that place. Felt bad for the guy. I wouldn't want to go out that way. I managed a truck stop an hour east of Winnipeg in the late 90s. This was around the time that Western Star came out with their one-way full window bunk. We had a regular base of clientele that would stop both ways. Surprise to no one, one of the regulars became enamored with one of the waitresses. She had complained to me about this driver two weeks before and I assured her I would deal with it if he continued to make her uncomfortable. On his return trip he stopped in, I watched, saw nothing and toward, he ate and then left for his truck. As the western starful window bunk has been mentioned he was parked right in front of the restaurant's bay window. I'm back in the kitchen helping with prep and I hear my name called and then I hear my name called. I walk out, look out the window and see the sun hitting the bunk window of this truck at just the right angle to witness this dude yanking on his wiener so hard that I thought he was going to rip it off. All the while he's staring straight at the waitress through the window of the restaurant. Before I could react he realized that we could see him, jumped in the saddle, pants around his ankles, and hightailed it onto the highway. I think he must have grabbed 5 gears inside 20 feet getting it going. We never saw him again. Not one anymore, but when I was a maintenance worker for a truck stop, I got a call over the radio saying there were two women in the parking lot covered in chocolate. I thought, well, as long as they don't come into the store. I went outside to find two women, completely naked, covered in a brown substance, I hope to god it was chocolate. The sheriff was called and apparently, they were both completely sober. They were there for a sorority thing. They were issued a ticket and it was, indeed, chocolate. Another one was a woman came to the counter and said someone stole her car. We called the sheriff and while we waited, I found she parked her car in the parking lot way in the back while she went to a nearby city with some girlfriends. When the sheriffs arrived, they couldn't find a trace of her car, broken window, skid marks, etc. And assumed someone must have had a key or the door was open slash picked. He did some investigating around the spot and found her car in the ravine she was parked next to. Apparently, a truck backed up, didn't know it hit something, and pushed it off the embankment. Took two wreckers to pull it out. The person who pushed it off was never found. I have a ton of crazy stories from that job, and I only worked there a year. Those are just the two that stood out to me.